Hello, my name is Ozo Donner. Today I'll be presenting my Raspberry Pi 3 Tashcam project. Let's begin first with what a Tashcam is. A Tashcam is a camera that's mounted to a vehicle's dashboard, more specifically, either on top of the dash or mounted into a windshield. Uh, because of memory limitations, the Tashcam should start recording video footage like video one, video two, video three, etc., until it reaches a certain point where it's running out of memory. At that point, it's gonna delete the first file. That's why it's a first in, first out design approach. And that's what it's gonna be used around this project in order to complete it. Uh, a dashcam must store footage uh, or be able to store footage permanently. And this project, it's achieved by switches as will be discussed and must be able to operate autonomously each time that the car is started. So the project requirements are to utilize the Raspberry Pi 3 in order to create a dashcam system, uh, successfully create Python modules that can create a dashcam that being a recording module, a storage management module, and uh, managing I.O. devices and permanent recordings. Uh, the system as explained more must be autonomous. That being that each time that the car is part up, the Raspberry Pi can be part up and it can start recording after a certain amount of time. Uh, yeah, basically, it must be able to also resume each time that the car is turned off. So for example, if I turn it on, I go to Walmart and then I come back and start the car again, it should be able to start automatically. And it must be packaged in a way that it's kind of temperature resistant, can resist some airflow and so on. Let's begin with the primary module. So first there is a recording module the recording module has the responsibility of taking the footage uh, from the Pi camera mounted into the device and storing those files in certain folders. Now, the way that the folders will be arranged are gonna be explained later. For now, it's just important to know that each recording is gonna have a 60 minute, uh, sorry, 60 second length. And that it's because the way that the the camera operates in the software, it's going to delete a recording if it's, for example, if a power is lost, like in the Walmart uh, scenario, if the power is lost on the Pi, then every recording made up to that point is gonna be deleted. So the best design approach taken for this is gonna be create chunks of 60 second videos, so one minute, so for example, if I take 10 minutes to go to Walmart, it's going to record 10 separate videos. And those videos can then be taken apart, put back together in a video editor, and then you have 10 minutes of recording. So that's just a, a simple way to mitigate the damage that comes when turning off the Pi. Because in the case that the system was made to record 10-minute videos or 5-minute videos, that means that each time that the car is turned off, that data will be lost. So... In order to mitigate those damages and minimize them, uh, 60 second videos will be sufficient. Uh, a storage management system will also be devised. This storage management is uh, supposed to be capable to delete files when a certain threshold is met. This threshold, as explained on the project report, uh, is done by taking the average uh, recording size for each video take it on the road, of course, because road videos take a little bit longer than regular videos. And take while taking the average of those will give you a certain time. So you can calculate a certain amount of time that you want to be recorded. Uh, for this project, it's chosen to be five hours, which leaves enough room for any, any occurrences that might happen. So uh, any older videos and six hours will be deleted by the system. The user should also be warned whenever as, uh, the threshold is approaching. So for 
this assign it has been chosen to be eight gigabytes as calculated. So that's the minimal storage required to be uh to approach the five hour uh goal. And ten gigabytes or six hours of recording will be equal to uh the time where it's gonna start deleting files. So the the goal will be reached, meaning that it's gonna keep the five hour recordings. But if the after the warning made by an LED, as we will see in a second, it's reached, then it's gonna delete and start deleting the oldest files. Let's talk a lot a little bit about the IO devices on this device uh, on the system. So basically, this consists of three LEDs and three switches. These LEDs are designed to first give information to the user. So the, for example, the green LED uh, has a specific purpose, as we will see in a second. The red LED highlights a different type of information and the yellow LED as well. The switches uh, mounted into the device are designed to, uh, when they're flicked, when they're turned on, those uh, will give a signal to the Raspberry Pi to record or more more or less store permanently the last recordings made. So for example, when looking at the device, there is so here on the device there is for example the first from the left is gonna be 15 minutes recording. This one's gonna be 30 minutes and this one an hour. So basically, each time that this happens, uh, when they're flicked, it, the system will take a file uh, that, that is 15 minutes of length, so 15 uh, individual videos, and then store them into separate folders so they're kept intact from deletion. That will also happen if it's 30 minutes or if it's an hour. So let's proceed. Now let's talk a lot of a little bit about how the different modules interact. So in the simplified version of the modules, we have uh, the recording module, which acts as the output devices. This is because it's gonna interact with the LEDs to let the user know that the the device is recording or if it has stopped recording. Uh, the storage management system also interacts with the output because it's also telling the user if it's running out of storage. Let's get a pointer back. So yeah, exactly. So the recording module will interact with the LEDs, send a signal saying, uh, okay, we're recording, everything's good. Or maybe that the recording has been stopped. So there's gonna be a specific or there is a specific operation for that. And that's the same for storage management. Now the permanent storage, uh, as explained earlier, manages both input and output devices. That's because there are switches. So whenever the flick the switch here, then uh, whenever the, the switch is closed, basically that means that we're gonna interact with the permanent storage module. This module will then save all of the files the, depending on whatever input was made and then give a signal to the user that the recordings were saved. Now let's talk a little bit about the storage design for this uh, device. So it's a little bit convoluted, but I think this picture shows it very well. So when we have, first the system will create, so we have one minute recordings, right? So there is, uh, these recordings are gonna be based on the time date. So for example, if we, if, and that's depending on the time of the recording. So example, right now it's 10, 15 uh, uh, at noon. So, or in the evening, sorry. And that means that it's gonna be safe as 22, 
50 and whatever seconds it is, it might be 30 seconds, for example. So this will be the file name and it's actually a dash. So more like this. So this would be a .mp4 file. This is the chosen format because of its accessibility. This recording will be then stored in a separate file. So each one minute recording as seen here, it's 1930 right? It's going to 1945.11. So it's going to record 15 minutes into one of the folders. So basically the system comprises of three main folders or more specifically two. One is the, the day folder. The day folder will be a folder created by the system each day. So when whenever uh, the first recording is made, a new day file will be created. So for example, today is the tariff of November and the file will be created will be uh, 11, 30, 22 or 2022 20, in this case. So whenever files are created, they create a main folder and that folder contains several subfolders. These subfolders are labeled 15 minutes folder. This 15 minute folders will include video files, specifically 15 video files. And as the name suggests, it's amounting to 15 minutes of recording. This assignment approach is done so because of the permanent recording system. As explained earlier, we're going to save 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and an hour of recording. So arranging the files this way makes it easier for us the programmers get the right folders that are required. So. For example, when we are getting a, a 15 minute folder, these folders are get it, uh, are arranged with a certain pointer. Now, pointers are a separate topic and it's still included into this because the pointers are what allowed us to turn on and off the device whenever it's, uh, so when the device is turned on, it will store uh, the 50 minute folder, 50 minute folder is one, for example. And whenever it stops recording 50 minutes, uh, so when it records 15 minutes, right, you got to Walmart and then came back halfway through your house, then you get a separate folder, which is uh, 1130 dash three or dash two. And this pointer file or this pointer value is stored in a separate document. So whenever the pie is turned off, it can be, and then turn on, you can retrieve that file and get start starting, uh, start recording files back into the folder that it was before. So yeah, basically in summary, there's a day folder. In the day folder, there are several 15 minute folders. And in those, there are gonna be exactly 15 recordings plus the pointer file that indicates how many files there are in the in this particular subfolder okay let's talk a little bit about the recording management design so here the let me get off this again. Okay. So there, let's begin first over here where this flow chart begins. So this uh, is going to explain the recording management and how it was designed. So this flow, flow chart really summarizes well how the program behaves. So first we're going to start the program. It's going to check if a day folder exists. So today uh, the file is turned on for the first time, a day folder does not exist because the it was turned on for the first time. So it's gonna go right to no, and it will create a new one. In the case that it's the second time you turn on the pie, then yes, a day folder exists. So a pointer file will be reached. This is done so because if a day folder exists, a pointer file is created. So it must automatically exist. So from here, they both get 
to a 15 minute folder. This is because if a day folder exists, then a 15 minute folder must exist because at creation, a 15 minute folder is created. After this creation of a 15 minute folder, right? And the pointers can be kept track here. The pointer is gonna be P for the 15 minute folder. So the 15 minute folder, if the day folder did not exist, it's gonna be one. And if not, it's gonna be whatever value is stored in the pointer file. Afterwards, it's gonna reach a decision where it guess uh, does a video pointer exist? So a uh, video pointer is basically a file that's keeping track of how many recordings are made into a, a new 50 folder file. So for example, you have recorded three videos. The, those three videos will be counted into the video pointer as three. So basically if a video pointer exists, sure, we'll access it and then we'll retrieve value from it. We will start a recording and then add a value to that pointer file. So that's why we are coming back here to the pointer file to add another number to the BP value, the video pointer. If it doesn't exist, it just creates one and it's equal to one. When the recording starts, a green LED will be starting to blink. If an error is ever met by this, uh, by this system, it will create a green LED stall, meaning that the LED will be kept on the whole time. If not, we will do a red LED blink. This red LED blinks just basically signifies to the user that the recording has stopped. Now over here, it's gonna check if the video pointer file created after this right here, when after the it's being added one, it's greater than 15. That's because we're creating 15 minutes folders. So 15, if VP X, it's equal to 15, or for whatever reason it got bigger than 15, it's gonna automatically create a new 15 minute folder and increase the original pointer. So our original pointer will then be increased on the file and either or we're gonna go back into the beginning. So this creates a loop that allows for recording files constantly. Okay, now let's, the storage management design is a little bit simpler because it utilizes functions to detect how many storage has been done or how it has been created into the main folder. So each folder they file, it'd be the 30th of November, the 31st, 1st of December, all of them will be stored in a main folder. That main folder will be checked by the storage management system. So when we start here at the, so this actually this part of the, because it's more convoluted, it's kept apart from the recording module. But it, as explained here, it's the same. So this this all comes incorporated into our last slide. So at the end of the recording module, there's gonna be a check. So this file will check if the file meets a warning threshold or a maximum threshold. That means if the warning threshold is met and it hasn't gone up to 10 to the deletion ratio, uh, deletion threshold, sorry, then a yellow LED will be blinked. This is to signify the user that, hey, you're running out of storage. If, if this file goes above the 10 gigabyte deletion threshold, then it will be go into a searching decision. So, uh, so basically, it, it's gonna start, right? It's gonna look at all of the day folders. It's gonna retrieve their names. So basically, if you have 1st of January, 2nd of January, 3rd of January, which one is the youngest or the, the oldest one? That will be the 1st of January, right? So that's, that is the purpose of this function. 
after locating this the oldest save folder, a yellow LED will stall. Then it will delete the, the nth 15 minute folder. That meaning the that meaning if we have because all of the files are stored in one, two, three, four, five. Or that being the 15 minute recording, sorry. So each 15 minute recording is gonna be 15 minute recording one, 15 minute recording two, 15 minute recording three, and so on. So basically within a day folder, the oldest file is just one because it, it was the one that was first created. So it's gonna start with one. And then when it, it deletes the nth 15 minute folder, it's gonna add one to it. Why? Because if we haven't still gotten below the 10 gigabyte rate uh, threshold, we need to keep deleting files. So we're gonna delete two in this case. So basically we keep on and on deleting files. If we reach 24, 24 is basically the maximum amount of files that could be stored in the day on a day folder. So basically, because we only have six hours of storage, if we divide six hours by 15, it will get us 24. So 24 individual 15 minute folders. These, uh, if this is ever met, meaning that six hours were recorded in a day, which is still unlikely, but it could happen, then it's gonna delete the day folder. Now, the good thing about this is that regardless of, because an exception is made here in the function when deleting files. So whether or not the files exist, it doesn't matter. It will delete files on that day folder until that threshold is met. So, it's just an assurance that the Pi will have enough storage to keep on recording new files. So that's basically the, the storage management design. Now let's get the permanent storage design. Uh, This is missing an error, I'm sorry. So we begin here the permanent recording loop, right? With, remember this permanent storage interacts with the IO devices. So this is a separate sub process from the recording module. So there's two uh, operations being, or loops running at the same time. This loop is just constantly checking, has the switches been turned on, for example, has the 15 minute switch turned on? Has the 30 minute switch is also I'm missing? Okay, ha what's the hour switch pressed? So these are basically, is gonna check everything. If they're being, uh, if they were ever turned on, if they're turned on, we're gonna save uh, the pointer file. So this is, as we explained here at the beginning, we're retrieving the pointer file from a separate file. So basically when the recording module creates and it's running, it will save whatever pointer is going on into a separate IO pointer. This is because the Pi doesn't like have two separate uh, programs accessing files. So basically we're gonna, when the recording is, is starting, you're gonna, it's gonna create a new pointer in its different files so that it can be accessed by the permanent storage system. After this, we're gonna have, whoops. After this, if it ever uh, occurs that the flip a switch, you're gonna see if for 15 minutes, you're gonna save whatever pointer it is because it's the current pointer. It's gonna record the last 15 minutes or the last 15 minute folders. So. It's going to store a whole 15 minute folder. Uh, if the 30 minute switch is flipped, then it's going to store two 15 minute folders, P and P minus one, because it's the newest point, uh, 50 minute folder from that. And if the hour switch is, uh, is flipped, then it's the same. It's just minus four. So it's going to be P, P minus two, P minus three, and P minus four. 
So because there are four, it's going to count to an hour. And the user will be given a signaling by the amount of blinks. So there's going to be one blink if one folder was stored, two blinks if two uh, folders were stored, and three blinks if a whole hour was stored. Let me clear this out. Now let's discuss a little bit the, the internal design of the hardware. So here we have a little model or circuit diagram of how it's laid out. Let me get annotation back. So we're gonna use just six pins over here. It's gonna be GPIO pins 25 to 23 and GPIO pins from five to 13. These are gonna manage the LEDs. So there's gonna be yellow LED, green LED, and red LED. Here, it's 25 to 23 are gonna access the switches, which are the one hour switch, the 30 minute switch, and the 15 minute switch. Now, going as a little summary of the LED responses, whenever the the LED stalls, meaning that it's kept on the whole time. Uh, when it's red, it will mean that a recording, uh, recording has finished. If it's green, it's going to account for a recording be stopped. And if it's yellow, it's gonna, it, it means that it started deleting files. For the blink, there are also messages. For a red, it doesn't apply because we don't have any blinks for the red. Uh, recording footage, actually, this is reversed, my bad. So this is an error here on the table. This should be here. So the red recording will blink and the stall, it doesn't have a stall, basically. For green, it means that uh, a, re a recording, basically, if the green LED uh, turns on, uh, at a certain rate, it means that it's recording footage. And if a yellow blink happens, it means that a permanent recording has been made. So as explained before, 15 is one, 30 minutes is two blinks, and an hour is three blinks. There's also a storage warning. A storage warning will happen if the thing permanently blinks, regardless of any input made. This is so it made so that the program doesn't store any permanent files while it's running out of memory. So let's continue. Now there's a little showcase of the recorded footage. Now as seen here, the camera has a little DIY mounting onto the whole board. So this is the board made for the design. And there's a little mount made for the for the camera to go on. As seen here in the recording, sometimes it might get bumpy on the road and that will happen the camera to move, but that's basically unavailable. Uh it was pretty good that uh, I was able to mount the camera using Velcro and Velcro allows it to stick a little bit better and hold a little bit better to the upper dash. As seen on the first slide, the device is mounted into the upper part of the dash and that Velcro allows it to really stick to it and avoid any bumpings. Let's get rid of... Okay. Whoops. There we go. So now there's a little demonstration, a pre-recorded demonstration of how everything is working out. So this are recording made before the system was assembled. So here we can see that whenever we flick it, flick the second one, it's gonna blink twice. We flick the third one, it's gonna blink three times. For the recorded, so this is for the permanent storage module. Here is the recording module. We see that the green LED blinks after a certain amount of time. And then after 
threshold is met, we see, whoops, I can skip to it. We see a red LED signaling that the recording has been stopped. Final remarks uh, to made of the system is that due to a lack of time, there was no time to create a, a collision module that was proposed on the project proposal made earlier. Uh, despite of this, I thought that it might be better to have a more comprehensive system that could work well instead of adding more modules while not having a perfect system or at least a good enough system working in the first place. Um, another remark to make is that as seen before on one of the previous slides right here, the quality is ob obviously not perfect but it's enough that you can recognize cars lanes and so on. so i think that this is sufficient because it allows to store more information and it doesn't risk as much of files being deleted on accident or by errors on the program so it's more safe or it's a safer bet to go with lower resolution In this case is uh, 480p but i have uh more concise or easier time on the memory. And this is all for this presentation. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Have a nice one.